Welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Wednesday. My name is Ryan Goss, and I'm the Platform Product Manager here at Imobi. And today we're going to be discussing second price auctions, specifically what they are, how they work. So before we get into that, we want to talk about the originations of second price auctions. And they were originally based on what was called a Vickery auction. Now this concept was then taken by Google and Yahoo and their advertising products, and it was tweaked a little bit to where we get to today, which is our modern day second price auction, which is used in our programmatic uh, auctions. And basically what a second price auction is, is that the highest bidder in an auction will pay one cent higher than the second highest bidder. That's important because what it does is it encourages bidders to bid as high or as high as they can for inventory that they really want. And the reason that that is important is that because they're only paying one cent higher than the second highest bidder, the risk to them that they will end up paying that amount that they bid is relatively low. The caveat to that, of course, is that if there's two bidders that bid high, then the final bid price will end up being high. But that is not a typical situation. So we're going to run through a few examples of second price auctions and show how the final price um, is settled upon. But before we do that, we want to talk about a couple of elements of second price auction that are really important because they impact the transparency of the auction and the final outcome price. So first off, we want to talk about the auction type. And today, specifically, we're going to be focusing on second price auctions. But the two main auction types that are used in programmatic um, auctions are first price and second price. Now with first price, it's pretty simple. Whatever the bidder wins, who wins the auction, they pay that amount. So if they bid $10 and they win the auction, they pay $10. In a second price auction, as we've already talked about, the highest bidder who wins the auction will pay one cent higher than the second highest bidder. Now the auction type is not a required element that has to be sent out in the bid request. But it's really important that the bidder works with an SSP that always provides the auction type. The bidder wants to know exactly what auction mechanics that they are functioning under so they know how they should be bidding, so they use the correct algorithm. So as you're, if you're a DSP out there and you're looking for an SSP to work with, make sure you work with one that always provides the auction type so there's no type of ambiguity there about what type of uh, logistics they're functioning under. The other element we want to talk about before we get into our examples is the bid floor. Now the bid floor is also another element that is not required. But without it, once again, there's a lack of transparency and the bidder is a little bit in the dark to try and determine how much they should actually bid. What the bid floor is, is the minimal amount that a bidder must bid in order to be eligible to win the auction. So if the bid floor is $2, a bidder must bid at least $2 or higher to be eligible to win the auction. So now that we've kind of defined some of our basic elements of a second price auction, let's run through a few examples. In our first example right here, we're going to say that there are three different bidders who've bid. So the first bidder we'll say is, has bid $7. The second bidder has bid $6. The third bidder has bid $5.50. And let's say there's a bid floor of $5. In this auction, Bidder number one is going to win the auction because they bid the highest. But they're not going to end up paying the $7 that they bid. They're only going to pay one cent higher than the second highest bid, which would be $6 and one cent. In our next example, there's only one bidder. So let's say again, bidder one bids $7 and there's a floor of $5. In this example, the bid floor acts as the second highest bidder. So bidder number one will win the auction again, but they will pay $5.01. Now in our last example, we have two bidders that have bid, but they bid the exact same amount. So let's say they both bid $7, and once again we have our bid floor of $5. Now the highest and the second highest bidder in this case have bid the same amount. And we, so we cannot add one cent to the second highest bid because that would make it 701, which would be higher than either of these bidders had bid. And we can never charge a bidder higher than what they actually bid. So the final price in this auction will end up being $7.
Now, in a case like this, where the highest bid is equal between two bidders, who wins the auction really depends upon the logic that is set at the SSP level. But the typical way that it's resolved is that one of the two that bid the same amount is randomly chosen to be the winner. So now that we've run through some examples, the last thing that we want to touch on is bid depth. And bid depth is the amount of bidders that have actually placed a bid and are eligible to win the auction. So bid depth can be seen as either a positive thing or a negative thing, depending on the party that is viewing it. So it's seen as a positive thing by publishers, who are the ones offering the inventory. They want to see greater bid depth, because the more bidders that bid in an auction, it drives up the price and increases their revenue. And we can see that in example one right here, where there are three bidders, and so the final price ends up being 601. If we compare that to our example number two, where there's just one bidder, where we have a much lower bid dip, uh, depth, we see the final price is 501. So from a published pr publisher's perspective, they definitely want to see example one, where there's a greater bid depth. Now on the opposite side of that, we have our bidders who want to see a low bid depth, because it's less competitive, and the price they end up paying ends up being much less. Once again, from a bidder's perspective, example two will be the better option for them because they're the only ones that have bid, and they will only pay one cent over the bid floor. Whereas in example one, when there's, where there is much greater bid depth and much more competition, they're going to end up paying a higher price. So that's what we wanted to cover today with uh, second price auctions. We hope that this has given you a better idea of how they work how they originated, and where they're going. And we'll see you next time in our next edition of Whiteboard Wednesday. Thank you very much.